speakers currently we're adjusters and we're going to interview some street dancers who will compete at b-boy city not child safe it's okay don't worry about it. if you don't have the endurance to run a marathon you're not gonna last at all check it out take <laughs> can you tell me what uh b-boy city means to austin i don't know i'm a locker man i don't know what you have me in this <laughs> <laughs> come on take it wasn't just the b-boys like it was anyone with street styles like you could you could get down and it was kind of like a like a like an open floor for like to show out right you know this is this is how i train this is what i do this is who i am it basically gives an opportunity for the dancers here in the scene to actually work towards something but not only that be able to share their crap with not just the local scene mm -hmm. but everybody outside of the local scene now that it's sponsored by udef it's bringing a lot of attention now uh on a national level and on an international level where now we have uh, you know, international b-boys coming down to compete, judge, you know, um, be a part of the scene. And plus, with Austin being like a booming city now, you know, it's bringing a lot more attention to our community too as well. It's a really important moment for us because, uh, you know, not every day do we get a chance here locally to perform at that level. Uh, we have like a lot of local jams, but b-boy city is that bigger event. So we just have a different platform. We have a different uh, way to represent. It used to be like invites only where it'd be like, big names or like out of town names and then locals would try to do their best to compete but it wasn't like enough. Now it's like open to the public where it's like you got people from all across like the US, the globe and everything. People just coming around to compete and it's one of those big jams that's recognized everywhere. So it started from like a small platform of like locals. Now it's like worldwide. Share, exchange, kind of pick up and have like what a true conversation would be, right? And this is like a conversation at a very high level. Like you can practice all you want here at Jester, but when it actually comes like to 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 put up and shut up, like B Boy City was like the space to do it. You know all the Hollywood movies how they perceive like street dancing. Do you think they're accurate in any way? Yeah, man, totally. Yeah, I, I met you on like the set of you guys are right. Take. I haven't seen a movie that really tests the the patience and the failure and the striving and the fa and, and, and the failing and the picking yourself back up and, and like all the things that go into training that you experience day to day like in the street dance culture, it doesn't really capture like the actual essence of like breaking in hip hop as it's like it's a lot more raw, it's more rugged, it's more grimy, it's more aggressive. I think the focus is on the dynamic moves that we do and, and sort of like the big powerful things that we do with our bodies and, the, and, and all the explosions that we do with like dancing and everything but there's really like a lot of intricacy to our dance too. There's a lot of like listening to the music and there's a lot of subtlety that I think that y if you just see b-boying a couple times you're not really going to pick up on. So for example like you know um you got serve, step up, all that. That's more of like, you know, um, I see that as like a fantasy dance. You know, the one thing to know about b-boying is b-boying is the original dance of hip hop, of the four elements. That was the number one staple for hip hop was b-boying in the dance form. Um, you know, there are movies out there that people haven't seen. You know, you you know, Beat Street, you know, it's it's been around for a while, but there's people who haven't seen Beat Street, and that's a really good uh, movie that portrayed not only b-boying, but hip-hop as a whole. Um, you also have um, The Freshest Kids, too, as well. Um, you know, Inside the Circle was a documentary, but it also, too, was, you know, a movie as well that could show the Austin scene. You know, it was based off of two b-boys from Austin who actually blew up, grew, gain fame from actually the craft that they worked on. So there are certain films that portray b-boying in a more realistic way of what you go through struggles, you know, because, you know, ultimately like this dance is like a struggle, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it comes from a struggle and it's you creating from having nothing and making something out of it. The most well-respected b-boys aren't the ones that can spin on their head a thousand times. The most well-respected b-boys are the ones that really know how to take a, a beat and really dissect it and really pick apart and do like really original moves that other b-boys aren't doing so getting ready for b-boy <laughs> city so training of course is the, the obvious one but how we train is basically on um you know you come to practice and you know it's not all about just 
you know, vibing out with everybody. Like today, you know, we, we were ciphering, we were grooving, you know, we're just having fun with it. But when it comes to competing seriously for a battle, you know, you train not only on a dance level, but you train on a physical level as far as, you know, outside the dance floor, you know, um, building yourself up, being prepared. Because when you go to battles, you may battle for one round, you might battle 10 rounds, you know, it's a tournament style based competition. So you have to be prepared, ready. Um, you have to have the endurance, the stamina to be able to hang on. If you don't really have that, you know, a lot of guys get gassed out, a lot of guys get tired, you know, and give up during those. So, you know, we train not only just our craft, but we train our bodies too. So that way um, we can adapt to our craft even better and be able to perform better at a higher standard. I have like two ways I practice. So one is I, going to either be really creating moves and, and uh, perfecting moves, so I like will break, break a certain movement down and, and I'll practice that, or I really string everything together. Because it's not just the moves itself, it's how you move between all those different things that you have and bringing it together and sewing that up into music and putting that into a battle and kind of bringing everything together. For this jam specifically, like I've been training sprints, so I'll be walking on a track, I'll be walking the short and sprinting on the long, walking along like the shorter end and then sprinting on the long, just to kind of simulate that battle condition where it's really stop and go. It's like you're sprinting and then you're resting, sprinting and you're resting. It's kind of like the pace of a battle. We do a lot to take care of our bodies to make sure we have the endurance to go these rounds because some of these rounds could go forever. Like a cypher battle could go 10 rounds. Even the basics going 10 rounds, not gonna cut it. Training hard and conditioning doesn't make you a good dancer, but it puts you in a better place so that you can execute as a dancer. I do like a lot of dynamic total body exercises where like I'll go up and down stairs, like upside down or you know, just really kind of abnormal things to test and condition your body like as a baseline. And then maybe about a month uh, before like something that I'm trying to train and get ready to, I'll set like schedules per week, like goals. Be in the moment and try to relate to the music as much as you can and then just kind of go from there.